Welcome back, everybody. We're continuing with Chapter 10, Notes on Momentum and Collisions. And uh, here we're going to be getting into collisions proper, you might say. Um, here we are. Uh, that is when two objects that have different momenta actually collide, what happens to their, uh, uh, to their momentum after the, after the collision. And of course, it depends uh, on what type of collision it is. We're going to be talking about things called elastic collisions. Actually, we'll be talking about things called inelastic collisions first, and elastic collisions later. But elastic collisions are those in which all the mechanical energy is conserved. <clears throat> you think of elastic as something that springs back, like say two um, of those really dense rubber super balls. All right, they they compress and then they um, they re-expand back out, and whatever they collide with, almost all that energy is conserved. Inelastic collisions, you know, when we think of inelastic, you think of things that don't spring back. Like let's say, um, oh, I don't know, maybe some sheet metal, all right? Some sheet metal, you bend it and it stays bent like that. That's definitely the case when you have things like uh, cars colliding, all right? The metal bends and it doesn't, the cars don't return to their original positions, obviously. And so you have some energy that's lost. Some of the initial mechanical energy is not conserved, that is you don't get it back. It turns into things like uh, sound possibly, or heat, or light, or just the work done to bending metal to get it to become a different shape. So we're gonna be lo looking at inelastic collisions first, and then um, later on we'll be looking at elastic collisions. But these are the two main types um, that we're gonna be talking about. So def to define inelastic collisions, and we already did that a little bit, um, the, the, def the definition of it is that uh, some mechanical en energy is lost, all right? So say you have something that's moving, it has some velocity, it has kinetic energy, and then it slams into the wall. Let's say you've got like a, a wad of, um, I don't know, clay or putty or something like that, and you throw it at a wall right there, all right? So here's your clay right here. We've got orange clay, apparently, and it gets thrown right into, say, a, a brick wall, all right? So it's moving initially in this direction. <clears throat> and it has kinetic energy, all right? Well, it kind of gets lumped into the side of the wall right there, and that kinetic energy final is what? Well, it's zero, right? It's zero kinetic energy because it's no longer moving, all right? But here it has some kinetic energy. It's one-half mv squared because it's moving. And so the question arises, what happened to all this kinetic energy that it had? And you can't, energy can't be uh, created or destroyed, but uh, what happened to it? Well, it went into deforming this clay. It went into doing work. It became kind of like an internal force. Um, so this mechanical energy of, of kinetic energy t uh, turned into misshaping that clay right there, and now it's at rest. It no longer has kinetic energy, and the work has been done to misshaping that clay. That would be... A good example of an inelastic collision. What's true of inelastic collisions, or any kind of collision, is that momentum is conserved. Momentum between the two objects is conserved. Now this isn't um, uh, the greatest example right here. Generally speaking, the, the one, I drew this as a brick wall, the, the one object will probably move if, it, if it's contacted by another object right here. Um, but uh, the momentum is going to be conserved. And this is always true. That is, the net momentum of the entire system is going to be equal to the net momentum of the entire system after the collision. And the first example that we'll look at, which is going to involve a couple of football players, is going to illustrate that. What is, what is key here is that kinetic energy is not conserved. All right, in inelastic collisions, you have the same momentum, same system momentum before and afterwards but not the same amount of kinetic energy. Look beforehand right here. Okay, the system's kinetic energy beforehand is some function of how fast this lump of clay is moving. All right? It has some kinetic energy. Afterwards, after contacting the brick wall right there, the system has no kinetic energy. It's, it's not going to spontaneously start moving. That energy has been dissipated into other, other different forms, and you're not going to get it back. And so with inelastic collisions, the final kinetic energy and initial kinetic energy are going to be very, very different. If we have two objects that stick together after colliding, kind of like this right here, uh, we call it a completely inelastic collision. Now, if you've ever seen cars um, collide, and hopefully you haven't, but um, 
or at least not in real life, but if you see a car accident, cars tend to, let's see, I'll draw a car right here, okay, our orange car, and I'll have a, uh, a red one right here, and um, they hit each other, all right, so this is going this way, and this other guy is going this way. They hit each other, and they tend to kind of bounce off of each other a little bit. All right, the car is crumpled, but they, they're slightly elastic. That is, metal does have some elastic properties. Well, the car is kind of go back out after colliding. All right, well, if we have two objects collide, there we go, so the cars move back out after colliding. If we have two objects collide, but they completely stick together um, yeah, as one after colliding, we call that a completely inelastic collision. That is, there's no bouncing back at all. The two objects that have two different masses and two different velocities become as if they were one. They stick together after colliding. And so we call that a perfectly inelastic collision or completely inelastic collision. Our example that we're going to do in this, uh, this video segment is going to deal with just that. When you play football, if you're, uh, if you're a defenseman, and if you're a good tackler, uh, as I'm told, good practice is when you tackle somebody, not just to hit them hard and hope that they fall down, but actually to wrap them up. All right, And so this tackler right here, this linebacker, is, a, is approaching a running back with the ball, and he has the intentions of tackling him and wrapping him up. And so what's going to happen is these two players are going to collide and become as one. And then the question is going to be um, what direction and how fast, so that is, what's the velocity after the collision, all right? So each of them has a mass. The running back, the guy in red right here, has a mass of 95 kilograms and has a certain velocity, so has a certain momentum. The linebacker, the guy in blue, has a certain mass, slightly, uh, slightly greater, and is moving at a different velocity. So the momentum, the positive momentum of this guy, which by the way, momentum is a vector, right? Uh, so you're gonna, it's going to be positive or negative. That's why we'll go arrow above the V right there. Uh, we're going to call this a positive x-axis, and this direction going back from right to left, the negative x-axis. This guy has a positive momentum, this guy has a negative momentum, and we're going to see what they come out to after the collision as they behave as one mass, and we're going to find out what their velocity is. The second part of that is what are the initial and final kinetic energies of the system? This guy definitely has some energy. This guy definitely has some energy. They both have energy. They just happen to be opposing energies. And uh, oh, there's tons of highlight reels on ESPN and, and other shows like that that shows guys hitting each other and how spectacular and, and all the, uh, the noise that you hear. There's a lot of energy that's released. We're going to see that the energy after colliding is going to be a lot less than the energy they both had before colliding. Um, and uh, a lot of that energy goes into rattling teeth and, uh, and, and compressing pads and that kind of thing and generally giving each other a headache. So, um, All right, I'm going to shrink this down here so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, here we go, just like that. All right, remember, the key here is that momentum of the system, oops, sorry about that, the momentum of the system is going to be conserved. The kinetic energy is not going to be conserved. All right, so... Um, in fact, I'm going to move, I think I'll move this over here. That makes a little, a little more sense. Come on now. There we are. All right. So I'm going to do this, uh, the red guy in red. So the mass, and R is going to be the running back, is going to be 95 kilograms. Okay? And the initial velocity of the running back is going to be 3.75 meters per second. So right away, we should be able to calculate the momentum of the, um, of the running back. All right, the linebacker, the mass of L right there is going to be 111 kilograms, and that's a kg right there. And the initial velocity of the linebacker is going to be, um, what is it, the 4.10 meters per second. All right, and so there is a momentum right here. And uh, you know, I'm, instead of switching colors, I'm just going to stay with black. Uh, 
the momentum of the running, oh, sorry, the mass of the running back times the initial velocity of the running back. There's a momentum right there. There's a momentum of the linebacker as well. Mass of the linebacker times initial velocity of the linebacker, all right, is going to be equal to, as they get wrapped up and become one mass after colliding, mass of the system times the velocity final of the system. The question is what direction are they moving in and how fast, what is the magnitude of that velocity? You know, I realized I just omitted something here that was uh, it's going to be very important. I just said that the, the running back has a velocity of 3.75 meters per second and that the linebacker has a velocity of 4.10 meters per second. The magnitude of the linebacker is 4.10 meters per second, but what did I miss? I missed the minus sign, right? Because this velocity, this guy is moving in the opposite, or I should say in the negative x direction. So it's very, very important that I put this minus sign right there. I'll put equals minus 4.10 meters per second. That's going to be very important. That's going to make all the difference. All right? So before we plug in numbers right here, let's just rearrange this and solve for um, what we want to know. We want to know what? What is their uh, velocity immediately after the collision? All right, that's this right here. That's the final velocity of the system. So we'll just take and we'll divide mass of the system. That is mass of the linebacker plus the mass of the running back. Take that and divide that below right here. Mass, I'm writing in all kinds of different colors now. Let's just go back to black. Mass of the running back, initial velocity of the running back, plus mass of the linebacker times initial velocity of the linebacker, all divided by the mass of the system, their added masses, is going to be equal to the final velocity of them as a system right there, okay? So now we can plug in and see what we get. Mass of the running back, that's 95 kilograms. Initial velocity of the running back, that is 3.75 meters per second, all right? That momentum plus the momentum of the linebacker, what's his mass? That's 111 kilograms times his velocity. Here's where the minus is going to be very important. Negative 4.10 meters per second. All, right. All that divided by what? Divided by the mass of the system. That's 95 kilograms plus 111 kilograms. And that's going to give our final velocity of the whole system. So the question is, who's going to win? We're going to find out in just a second here. Okay, and it looks like the final velocity is negative 0 0.48 meters per second. So who won? Who won in this collision right here? It looks like the linebacker won, right? Because the final velocity of the whole system is being pushed back in the negative direction. So these guys hit and then they start moving backwards. So I'm not sure this guy right here quite made it into the end zone. So that's going to be our final velocity, all because we set the, uh, the initial momenta, the sum of the initial momenta, equal to the final momentum of the system. All right, that was part A right there. Let's do part B real, br real briefly, and then we'll be done. Okay, I'll do B up at the top right here. The question is, what is the, uh, the initial and final kinetic energies of the system? All right, well, energy initial is going to be the kinetic energy initial of the running back plus the kinetic energy initial of the linebacker, all right? So that's going to be one-half mass of the running back. What is the mass of the running back? 95 kilograms times the initial velocity of the running back, 3.75 meters per second squared, right? Kinetic energy is one-half mv squared plus kinetic energy of the linebacker. And remember, that with kinetic energy, the direction doesn't matter because the kinetic energy is just a scalar. Um, it's just an amount. It's, it's a magnitude. So we're going to add them up. All right, so one-half mass of the linebacker, that's 111 kilograms. I think I have enough space here. Times the velocity squared of the linebacker, negative 
1.10 meters per second squared. All right, there's that square up in the, in the corner there. All right, that's going to be our total kinetic energy of the system. Those two added up together. What do we get? Looks like I get, before the collision, the total kinetic energy of the system, or the total any kind of energy of the system, is about 1,601 joules. All right, quite a bit of energy. Now, that's them added up. They don't divide it perfectly evenly between them, but uh, it looks like the one guy has more energy anyway. But um, that's the total energy of the system, all right? Let's compare this and find out what the energy, the final energy of the system is. Energy, energy final of the system. What, and what do they have? Well, the, the system is just one object after the collision, right? Because they're moving as, um, as one mass, that is the, the, added, the sum of the two masses right there. And they're moving with this velocity. They're moving back, uh, you know, in the negative direction. All right, so that's simply going to be kinetic energy final of the system. That's going to be 1 half mv squared. What's the mass of the system? 95 kilograms plus 111 kilograms, right? Times what's the velocity of the system? <clears throat> Negative 0 0.48 meters per second. That's what we just figured out in the first part of the problem. That value squared for the system. That system right there. Okay. 1 half mv squared. What do we get? And I think we're going to get something very, very different from our initial system energy. I get a grand total of 23.7. Trying to write with my cursor again. 23.7 joules as our final energy. Very, very different from our initial energy, right? So where did all this energy go? Like I said before, probably went into compressing shoulder pads and helmets and the foam that's in there and like I said, probably rattling some teeth and some skulls in the meantime and creating some sound and some friction. So a lot of that energy was lost. The whole system is moving with a much lesser energy after colliding. So that's a great example of an, a completely inelastic collision where two different objects collide and stick together. So that's example 10.6. Thanks for following along. And uh, if you have any questions, make sure you come see me. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.